Welcome to Glitched, I'm Francisco Lozano, and this is your weekly wrap up. Let's start off with some news that would be depressing if anyone actually still had a Wii U or used the Miiverse. That's right folks, Miiverse is on its way out. The online social gathering place began back in 2012. The service was available to Wii U users on the console's launch and later to 3DS owners. Two years following its start, Nintendo made the service accessible through a web version as well. The end of the service was discovered originally by data miners back in July inside of a system update and alas, they were right. The service will be shut down on November 8th, but before that, you still have a chance to save any content from your account through a web portal that I was talking about earlier. We'll put a link down in the description below to instructions on how to do so. Next up, we have a creation from Nintendo that wasn't a flop. Sorry, we just, just no. Pokemon Go has another new update with new legendaries. While many of us here at Glitched might assume that our other host Will is the only one still obsessed with this game, the fact that there's news about it tells us otherwise. Legendaries first appeared in the game about a month ago with the franchise's original bird trio, but as of this Thursday, the birds have been replaced by dogs. That's right, Entei, Suicune, and Raikou will be available for raid battles around the world. As of right now, each of these guys are exclusive to a specific region. Raikou is in North and South America, Entei is in Europe and Africa, and Suicune is in the Asian Pacific region. This is where they will remain for the rest of the month, but on September 30th, they will move to another region, and this pattern will continue until they have each visited all three regions. Now, since we are talking about AR, there is a new title on the horizon that takes advantage of your phone's capabilities, this time with an undead twist. The Walking Dead Our World is coming soon, according to the trailer, to both the Apple Store and Google Play. The new augmented reality game is coming out of Next Games in Finland, and from what we know, thanks to the trailer, players will use their phones to find weapons and kill zombies around the world but digitally. The trailer itself was very cinematics heavy, so at the moment it is a bit hard to tell what the game will actually look like and how it's going to function when it's finally in our hands. The developer claims the game to be a first-of-its-kind location-based augmented reality mobile game. As of right now, all that is publicly known apart from what we saw in the trailer is that Next Games is using Apple's AR kit and a feature called AR Point Cloud, which apparently gives developers the option to hide objects in an AR environment and then show them at specific points in the game. Depending on the popularity of this game, AR gaming could be taking a whole new turn. Here's hoping that it ends up being as cool as it sounds. Nintendo hosted their second Nindies stream this week. Just to keep everyone up to date, here's a quick list of the games that were shown at the event. Steam World Dig 2, Morphe's Law, Golf Stories, Floor Kids, Battle Chef Brigade, Yono and the Celestial Elephants, Polly Bridge, Mom Hid My Game, and Sausage Sports Club. All of those are set to release before the end of the year. Coming in 2018, though, we'll be getting Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes, Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition, Dragon Mark of Death, Super Meat Boy Forever, Mulaka, Next Up Hero, Light Fingers, and Shovel Knight, King of the Cards. Those are all the games that were announced on Wednesday, but look forward to more coverage as we learn more. Video games in the Olympics? Well, this story began at the beginning of August, but there have been some new developments. Organizers for the 2024 Olympics in Paris have indicated that esports could join the likes of swimming and javelin on the Olympic stage. But the president of the International Olympic Committee has a few stipulations if esports did join these ranks. President Thomas Bach expressed what kinds of games would and would not be allowed on the global stage in an interview with South China Morning Post. Bach stated in the interview that the Olympic Committee, quote, wants to promote non-discrimination, non-violence, and peace among people, and that this doesn't match with video games, which are about violence, explosions, and killing, and there we have to draw a clear line. So that kind of seems to mean that none of the esports that we are used to seeing being played around the world are going to be happening in this scenario. No Overwatch, League of Legends, Smite, Counter-Strike, Dota 2, all those games and more would be off the table if Box says is true. Honestly, we're not actually sure what would be left to play competitively in the real world. Maybe FIFA. 
Nonetheless, taking all of these top esports out of the running for the Olympics is just as bad as not having any of them there at all. Honestly, it's kind of worse. If the Olympics is meant to show an accurate depiction of the top competitors around the world, box statement means that at the moment esports will still not actually be presented in the world as they really are. Now, on a less sad and severe note, Pokemon Anime Series is bringing back Misty and Brock. That's right, the original trio will be reuniting for an upcoming two-part episode in Pokemon Sun and Moon that will take Ash back to the Kanto region. That's all we have for you this week. How do you feel about esports possibly coming to the Olympics, and what do you think of President Box statements? Let us know in the comments down below. It's time for me to go practice some Splatoon, since that seems to be the only shooter that might actually make it to the Olympics. Remember, you can always like and subscribe to stay up to date on all your gaming news. This was Glitched, and I'll see you next time. Ow! Ow! I can't go on. That hurts so much. You can take yourself out with the camera. It really does hurt.